Hello and welcome to Volusia Magazine. I'm Amber Patterson. Are you ready for Money Smart Week April 5th through the 12th? Well, Library Services has free programs for you. We also have some information about a new app from the American Red Cross that will warn you of flood alerts and flash floods. You can find out about growing pomegranates and how to care for loved ones with signs of dementia. And also, what's new at the Ocean Center? Those segments, along with news and more, coming right up on Volusia Magazine. Stay tuned. Life-saving alerts about flooding and flash floods. There's a new app for that. The American Red Cross just released its new flood app to coincide with National Flood Safety Awareness Week, which was March 16th through 22nd. This free app gives iPhone, iPad, and Android smartphone users instant access to local and real-time information so they know what to do before, during, and after a flood. The content is available in English and Spanish based on the user's language settings on their mobile device. The app includes location-based audible NOAA flood and flash flood watches and warnings, even if the app is closed. Volusia County Emergency Management Director Jim Judge, who is also a member of the American Red Cross Scientific Advisory Committee, said the flood app puts life-saving information right in the hands of people whenever and wherever they need it. This is a wonderful new application that's available to citizens throughout the country, and it will help individuals understand what to do before, during, and after a flood. It is local information, so it's specific also for Volusia County. So you will get a warning uh, for a potential flood. Also, there's a toolkit that goes along with it that uh, will help you do instant messaging to let family and friends know that you're out of harm's way. And then also a part of the toolkit, it has a little flashlight and a flasher that can go off to help individuals find you, uh, you know, should you uh, be in a situation where you're involved in a flooding, and it's free. Uh, the flood app, the tornado app, the hurricane app, they're all free. There is a charge, I think it's 99 cents for the pet app, and it's a pet first aid app. And again, specific information that you can use for here in Volusia County. The Flood app, along with others, can be found in the Apple App Store and the Google Play Store for Android by searching for American Red Cross or by going to redcross.org slash mobile apps. There's also a link to the apps on the county's emergency management webpage. You can just go to volusia.org slash emergency management and click on the Get Connected tab on the left side of the page. Money Smart Week, April 5th through the 12th, is a priceless opportunity to learn how to better manage your money. The Volusia County Public Library System will host dozens of free financial classes and activities in recognition of Money Smart Week. Uh, this is the third year Volusia County Public Libraries have participated in Money Smart Week, which is a national public awareness campaign. And the library's aim with Money Smart um, Week programs is to help our patrons um, become money smart and help them be better able to, to manage their personal finances. And we're trying to reach all ages and all stages of life, so we are offering programs for children, for teens, and for adults. The majority of our programs are for adults. Um, the library has partnered with financial advisors and other experts in our community to come in and to present programs to our, to our patrons. The free programs will be held at the regional libraries in Ormond Beach, Daytona Beach, New Smyrna Beach, DeLand, and Deltona. They will cover a variety of topics including investing, first time home buying, financing a college education, retirement, identity theft protection, and even couponing. And here are even a few fun financial facts. Did you know that the oldest money is probably small pieces of obsidian that were used in Turkey as far back as 12,000 BC? And if you toss a penny 10,000 times, it will not be heads up 50% of the time, but more like 49%. The heads picture weighs more, so it ends up on the bottom. So always pick tails and you'll have a slightly better chance. 
There is more money printed for the game Monopoly every year than real money printed around the world. Money Smart Week is sponsored by the Federal Reserve Bank of Chicago and the American Library Association. To learn more about Money Smart Week, you can pick up some more financial tips. You can visit moneysmartweek.org. To see which programs are being offered at your local library, you can visit volusialibrary.org. The County Council is committed to building trails because they improve your quality of life. Trails offer exercise, recreation, access to nature, and alternative transportation routes. They also bring families and friends together to enjoy the outdoors. People of all ages and abilities can enjoy our trails in Volusia County. Whether you're a walker, jogger, inline skater, or bicyclist, we have a trail for you. To learn more about Volusia County's trails, visit volusia.org trails. Well, it's time now to join urban and residential horticulturalist Joe Sewards of the University of Florida, Volusia County Extension for his segment about growing pomegranates. Hello, my name's Joe Sewards. I'm the urban horticulture agent for the University of Florida, Volusia County Extension Office. And this is Horticulture Today. Those of you who have attended any of my classes knows that everything that I talk about relates to Florida-friendly landscaping. Saving water, using fewer pesticides, less fertilizer in the landscape, saving money, and having attractive Florida-friendly landscape. Perhaps the highest expression of that would be adding edible plants to the Florida-friendly landscape, creating an edible Florida-friendly landscape. One plant that you could add to the Florida friendly landscape that is relatively easy to grow and most people don't realize will grow successfully in Florida is the pomegranate. The pomegranate is a plant of antiquity. It has been grown for thousands of years in the Middle East where it is native. Another aspect of pomegranates that most people don't realize is that there are hundreds of varieties of pomegranate. Many of them are very well adapted to the Florida climate. And we actually have a project at the University of Florida to evaluate pomegranates to see how well they will grow here so that people can grow them successfully in the home landscape or maybe even as a small commercial enterprise. Pomegranates are popular and their popularity is growing throughout the United States. Most people are familiar with pomegranate juice, buying fresh pomegranates. Pomegranates are very healthy they have a lot of fiber if you eat them raw, they have a lot of phytonutrients, and they're a beautiful plant. They have beautiful flowers and they have a beautiful fruit, a real subject of conversation in the landscape. Pomegranates will grow pretty much anywhere citrus will grow and require very much the same care as citrus in terms of water and fertilizer. They are fairly pest resistant, they don't have as many pests as citrus, so if you are struggling with your citrus in the home landscape and you need to plant something else, you might want to consider a pomegranate. Anywhere they're going to get well-drained soil, plenty of sunshine is a good place for pomegranates. They can be grown as small trees, they can be grown as large shrubs, you could even grow them as a hedge. They can be a part of any Florida-friendly landscape. If you're growing pomegranates, they will take some care. They will need to be pruned from time to time just to keep them neat and tidy. Adding organic matter to the bed where pomegranates are growing is a good idea as well. It helps conserve moisture in the soil and it also helps reduce the population of soil-borne nematodes, which can be a problem on pomegranates from time to time. Other than that, pomegranates are fairly pest-free. An occasional aphid might show up, but nothing that can't be easily controlled. If you're thinking about growing pomegranates and you have more questions, Feel free to call us at the University of Florida Volusia County Extension Office, or you can visit our website as well. The phone number is area code 386-822-5778, or you can go to volusia.org slash extension. Here's to healthy planting. For Horticulture Today, I'm Joe Sewards. 
Let's join health reporter Stephanie Strong with this segment of Community Health Matters. Imagine not being able to remember your address. What about your social security number or having difficulty dressing and doing routine activities such as paying bills or washing dishes? These symptoms may come with the aging process and they can be signs of dementia. Just ask Louise McGahan. The loving wife finds herself in the role of caregiver to a spouse who is dealing with dementia. You're always trying to make sure that they're not going to injure themselves or have something happen to them. Uh, wandering, if they start wandering, you have to make sure that you have your locks and it's just so many things that you have to keep an eye on. Dementia is an umbrella term describing the loss of cognitive functioning, thinking, remembering, and reasoning and behavioral activities to such an extent that it interferes with a person's daily life and activities. He had to give up driving. Oh, uh, that, was, that was quite a problem. Uh, fortunately, he never had an accident. He was smart enough to give up the keys without too much trouble. A lot of people, that's a very, very hard thing to give up because you've been so independent for so many years need a lot of support from your family and your friends and uh, it's it's just a complete life-changing experience um. the council on aging of volusia county has been offering support services and information to help seniors and their caregivers for over 45 years the first part of our dementia track is a neighborhood social activity program that gives that is set up that's a nine to three program set up in local churches in Volusia County where a loved one a caregiver can bring their loved one and that loved one is with um, with us for the day in a very social active group very structured uh, we play games we have exercises, we do singing, we do lunch, we do conversational times. I've never swung in my life. <laughs> well, we're swinging now. This social now. group starts the same time by doing the same thing each meeting, playing a popular card game that challenges the mind called Kings in the Corner. Attendees enjoy it. It is a, a challenging way to start the day. Uh, to get the, the cognitive juices working, um, and they enjoy it. It's, it's fun. What would you put on a red two? Number it is very two. important for caregivers to when take time down, to care three, for themselves. Three, we have support groups where a caregiver can come and sit with other people who are um, experiencing the same type of things and just to discuss what they're going through. And uh, that's a very important part, is to find some sort of support. You've got to be able to rest You've got to be able to do physical, you know, you need to physically take care of yourself um, and, and keep your mind going too. It's the caregiving part of it is so stressful that over 50% of caregivers die before the loved one that they're taking care of. Uh, dementia is increasingly common, uh, especially with our aging population, our, our baby boomers, and all of us need to be concerned about it because it is there but also we need to position ourselves to be able to take care of folks who have dementia. Memory loss that disrupts daily life may be a symptom of Alzheimer's or another dementia. Alzheimer's is a brain disease that causes a slow decline in memory, thinking and reasoning skills. There are 10 warning signs and symptoms for dementia. Every individual may experience one or more of these signs in different degrees. If you notice any of them, please see a doctor. Memory loss that disrupts daily life, challenges in planning or solving problems, difficulty completing familiar tasks at home, at work, or at leisure, confusion with time or place, trouble understanding visual images and spatial relationships, new problems with words in speaking or writing. 
misplacing things and losing the ability to retrace steps, decreased or poor judgment, withdrawal from work or social activities, and changes in mood and personality. Louise and Richard are taking each day, one day at a time, coping with the struggles of living with dementia with positive attitudes and loving hearts. For more information about the Council on Aging's programs and services, please visit www.coavolution.org or you may call 386-253-4700. For Volusia Magazine, I'm Stephanie Strong, Public Information Officer for the Florida Department of Health in Volusia County. As always, if you have any questions about this or any other health-related issues, you can log on to volusiahealth.com. Let's head into the studio to join our very own Community Information Director, Dave Byron, with his guest, Ocean Center Marketing Director, Angela Cameron Daniels. Well, thank you, Amber, and hi, everyone. You know, with the national and local economy continuing to improve, and convention business picking up. Bookings at the county's Ocean Center are up and prospects look very good for a strong spring and summer season. Today we'll get an update on the county's Ocean Center with our studio guest, Ocean Center Marketing Director, Angela Cameron Daniels. Angela, how are you doing today? I'm doing fine, Dave. How are you? Thanks I'm, for inviting me on. Thanks. Uh, you know, we haven't had you on, I think, since last October. It has so been a while. Uh, I thought we'd catch up. First of all, how's the Ocean Center doing? The Ocean Center is doing really well. We're having a strong 2014, I'm proud to say. Uh, five months into the year, we're already, as far as booked business, we're over where we were, uh, close to where we were ending last year. So I know we're going to have a strong 2014 in future years look good. Our January and February numbers, the attendance were up and also events. So I feel really confident about moving forward. You know, looking at, uh, you know, uh, as you say, the mix of, uh, of events that you have at the Ocean Center conventions and so forth, you know, and looking over that list, it seems like you got a nice mix, uh, you know, some conventions, some uh, consumer shows, uh, something for everyone, I guess. We do. I mean, uh, take for instance, this weekend we have the Spring Break Nationals Audio Show. We'll have mm -hmm. the Daytona Beach News Journal Home Show also in March, but then we go into the Florida Federation of Color Guards which is a great event, you know, from the sports and competitive arts side of life. Mm -hmm. April, we have, uh, it's always a popular event, the National Cheerleading Association. It's really fun to watch those colleges and those routines. Right. They'll be back, and they've been here longer than 15 years. Um, then we move into May with uh, drill team graduations, uh, clinical virology. We've got a new uh, client this year, Herbal Life, so they're coming in April. So we do have a very mixed group of, of uh Conventioneers and events. You know, as you just mentioned, uh, you know, where you are in terms of, uh, you know, revenue generated events at the Ocean Center and so forth, you're obviously well ahead of last year. What do you attribute that to? I mean, do you think it's just the economy thawing out or obviously your great marketing? I mean, what do you? Well, you know, Deb, I think it's a mixture. I mean, obviously the sales team is doing a great job. The entire team's doing a great job and the, and the operations team serves them so we get that repeat business. We have a great building, as you know. Right. It is is a gorgeous building, modern, uh, a lot of natural light. Um, great and, art collection too. A great art collection, which I I really you know tell a lot of planners about our art collection, which is really an unusual amenity for us. Great destination. It's affordable, accessible, and we're right across the street from the beach. So, plus the economy is on an upswing as far as meetings and conventions. So I think it's a combination of a lot of elements which, you know, we're very glad. I think the destination, you know, is a great destination. Mm -hmm. And um, I think you'll see it start moving ahead and, and progressing each year. When you look at, um, you know, the various types of markets for the Ocean Center, the types of, of conventions and so forth that would be a nice fit for the Ocean Center, what, what do, you, do you feel like your, your kind of your niche, two or three or four markets are? Definitely sports and competitive arts. As you know, we do quite a bit of, of those. And I think for those same reasons, affordability, accessibility, you know, the teams get there with their families. Everything's within walking distance. So those two markets are very strong. Faith-based has always been very mm -hmm. strong for us. Uh, we're just really kind of getting into the association market, so we're hoping to grow that market. But definitely the sports, competitive arts, and faith-based are our top three. 
And when you bring a group in like the cheerleaders group, for example, or some of the uh, youth groups that you have in the summertime in the Ocean Center, uh, it, it's very visible. They're very visible in the community. You can see them at the Ocean Walk shops. You can see them at the mall, at, you know, boardwalk or whatever. And, and the merchants uh, around the Ocean Center really see the difference. They benefit from that. Uh, they really do. And when, you know, NCA is here, National Cheerleaders, you can see them in Ormond. You can see them in Port Orange. It's great to see the families and all the restaurants. Right. I mean, take, for instance, Avatar that we had in February. I mean, they go all the way up to Ormond, and they go to that shopping center, um, Barrelow Plaza. They go to the, you know, and, and we actually have store managers say that's a great piece of business. They come in here and they shop. So those are all good feedback for us, you know, and it's great to go over to Ocean Watch Shops and they say, Ray, you're having a great year. Thanks for the business. When you, uh, obviously, when you book a convention, I know uh, working with, with you folks over there, I mean, you're, you're looking at, in some cases, conventions in 2017, 18, 19. I mean, several years out in advance. It takes quite a while to recruit and then uh, eventually contract these events. You have to look not only in the near future, but really a, a, in the longer term future as well. What, what do you see in the future? Well, I see that those years, you know, right now we're working on 16, 17, 18 and out. And I think you mentioned one time in one of our meetings, it's not instant gratification because yeah. you really are, you know, trying to get your foot in the door with these planners. You develop a relationship and you just keep working at it and they keep thinking of you. And then their RPs are, you know, 2016 out and beyond. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, we're doing really good with that. We're really getting uh, those leads we need and qualifying those leads and profiling. I think that's really helping us. You know, Angela, in your business, uh, you know, to book a, a large group, uh, for example, like the Shriners that are coming in, I think in 17 they're coming right. in, mm -hmm. uh, or a, another very large group, oftentimes communities are competing for that business. I mean, and they'll, you know, in, in some ways it's like a, a poker game, you know, someone throws someone in, something in and then you got to match it right. and that sort of thing. Uh, you know, and in many larger destinations, they're actually giving the building space away in exchange for the community economic development. And that's a balancing act, I think, at the Ocean Center because obviously you have your bottom line to worry about as well as the economic prosperity of the community. Uh, it can be quite a quite an analysis sometimes. It, it is, and we have to take every piece of business. I mean, every piece of business is different, and you look at it, and you obviously look at the economic impact. You look at what it revenue it's going to bring into the Ocean Center, but we work with hotel rebates. We work to see if maybe food and beverage, we can get all their food and beverage. Um, you know, we're, you make concessions where we can, but it, it is constant balancing act because we need to obviously provide the revenue for the Ocean Center, but also provide the economic impact for the right. area and look at both of those and those two need to mesh and, and be, you know, comparable to each other. One of the uh, uh, new things this year at the uh, Ocean Center, uh, Angela, is the fact that um, you're actually getting some marketing money from the Daytona Beach Convention and Visitors Bureau. Uh, it seems like, from what I understand now, the Ocean Center is really going to concentrate on the convention business, whereas the CVB is going to concentrate more on, I guess, overall destination marketing. From those dollars that you're getting from the CVB, uh, how does that work? What are those dollars going to be allocated for? Well, we have two new positions that we're getting ready to, um, actually both positions have been filled and they'll start shortly. One is another sales manager that will cover corporate segments, third party, a segment <coughs> that we really haven't um, you know, spent a lot of time on. Right. And then a marketing specialist that will get in there and really look at sales analyzation and market reports and market research and help us on that end. The rest of the dollars will go for an professional incentive fund. And this is when a group comes in and their first time group will have uh, dollars as long as they fit the criteria mm -hmm. and the economic impact and that is um, based on rooms and peak nights, right. then we will offer, you know, that group will qualify for this incentive fund, and it's something we've never had. And especially on the sports and competitive arts side, they, they are always looking for that incentive fund to, right. to bring, you know, to, to the building. So I think it's going to help us out tremendously. Angela, I mean, we've talked in the past about the fact that one of the things uh, that uh, you and Don would need, if you could wave a, wet, a magic wand, you would like to have a signature hotel or two right next to the Ocean Center. Uh, it, you know, there have been announcements of a couple of new hotels being built in the 
beach side of Daytona Beach. Uh, seems to be a lot of momentum with what's going on at the Speedway and all of that. Uh, you know, this has got to bode well, I would think, for the uh, buzz around the Ocean Center. Well, you know, the buzz with the Hard Rock and the Speedway and all the new development really is helping us from a PR standpoint when we're talking to planners. Obviously, we'd really like to have some additional properties within walking distance right there at the Ocean Center so right. that, you know, we can attract a different segment maybe than we've been able to attract. But all of it's good. I think that our name's getting out there as far as our destination. And, you know, it's looking good for developers if they hear that Hard Rock's coming or some of the other new developments, then I'm, I'm sure that bodes well for all of us. One of the things uh, that you have started at the Ocean Center in the last couple of years is you not only are marketing far and away, but you're also marketing close and in. In other words, um, there are a lot of uh, uh, companies in Volusia County, a lot of people in Volusia County that are members of associations. Maybe they go to a conference in Chicago or New York or what have you, and their association meets in various locations. And you've sort of reached out to the community through the manufacturers or whatever and said, hey, why don't you meet? in your own backyard, meet at the Ocean Center, sort of kind of a bring a meeting home concept. Um, how's that worked out? It's worked out great, and I know that, Dave, you were one of the instrumental ones in getting that started, and I'm gonna tell you what a brilliant idea, because we're constantly meeting people, and they, they think that, oh, I've never thought about bringing the right. meeting here. And we do what we call these chef's tables, where we invite uh, companies to come over and really experience our building and our food quality innovations, and I think that's really making a difference. And we're really reaching out to the local community and saying, you know, if you're a member of association, think about us. Right. And it's really making a difference. And I will have to say the program seems to be getting stronger and stronger. Um, and Ovations is doing a great job uh, with their food service and quality. And so that really has helped us out a lot. Yeah, you mentioned Ovations a couple of times, the food service provider at the Ocean Center. Um, it, you know, one of the things that is very important to the Ocean Center's bottom line is that so-called food and beverage revenue um, generated by events at the Ocean Center as well as events you can generate your, on your own. Uh, you know, the food service quality at the Ocean Center, uh, people are, are really, really given very uh, high, high reviews to. I mean, we're so fortunate because it's not, it's not always the case, and, and it really is the, the presentation, the food quality. The chef can design any menu for any particular group, like we've organize vegan menus for 3,000 attendees or right. we can do themed menus so he's very brilliant with that and I think that adds that extra touch when someone's coming in and it's different and we've been very fortunate from that standpoint. So if there are people out there that uh, want to get more information about the Ocean Center uh, how do they get more information? Well you can go to our website oceancenter.com it's got a lot of information there and, and you can look at our video and it's got all of our Rates and uh, capacity charge and floor plans are a Daniels at oceancenter.com. Feel free to email me. And check out that video. Absolutely, it's a, yeah. about a five minute video that's uh, an award winning uh, project now. It is, and, uh, at Fed, Addie Van Cleef. Well, Angela, I want to thank you for sharing the information with us. Uh, we'll have you back in the next uh, two or three months to catch up on what's going on at the Ocean Center. But it really does seem like things are going pretty well right now. It is, David. Thanks. It's always great to be able to share our information. Our guest today, Angela Cameron Daniels, she's the marketing director at the county's Ocean Center. And with that, we'll go back to you, Amber. Thanks, Dave, and thank you for watching Volusia Magazine. If you have any questions about the show, you can feel free to give us a call at any of the numbers you see listed here, or you can log on to volusia.org and click on the News tab at the top of the screen to find us. Incidentally, you can find the County Council's meeting calendar there, too. In fact, you can use volusia.org to find out about meeting dates, workshops, topics of interest, activities, and how you can become involved. And we hope you won't forget to listen to Volusia Today. It's Volusia County Government's weekly public radio program. Volusia Today airs every Tuesday and Sunday mornings on the local radio stations you see on your screen. For Volusia Magazine, I'm Amber Patterson. Have a wonderful evening.